super simple video today. Uh, we are looking at the GoPro Hero 10 versus the DJI Action 2, and we are looking at, at one thing today, which will overheat first. I've reviewed both these cameras on the channel, so if you wanna go check those out, see below, kinda of see my, my opinions on each of them, how I would use each of them, why I would shoot one over the other. But today we are singularly focused on, on a very important issue, because if your camera overheats and you can't shoot it, well, it doesn't matter how good it is because it won't work because they've both been plagued with overheating. Both companies have addressed that with firmware. So right now, both of these cameras are updated to the very latest firmware as of July, 2022. I'll put that somewhere on the screen so you know which firmware I'm using on these two cameras right now. Again, as of July, 2022. Now, right now it is 73 degrees. I'm just gonna kind of post these cameras up on this ledge here and just let them go and see if one of them overheats. A lot of people talk about overheating on these cameras. And let me just say, first off, I personally haven't had that happen a ton only because that's not how I use my cameras. Both of these action cameras, how I use them is, is kind of shorter clips, maybe one, two, three minutes, five, 10 minutes max. And in those scenarios, I really don't see overheating, but I do get a lot of comments from people that are using them for longer clips and that's, that's kind of where the overheating issues seem to come in. Also, frame rate seems to affect the overheating the most. So we'll start them both at 4K, 24 frames a second. I know the GoPro can go higher, but we're trying to keep these cameras at the exact same settings. So we'll both do 4K, 24 frames a second, just let them run, and then we'll bump up, bump up, bump up. And each time I will let the cameras get all the way back down. So yeah, this is it's gonna take a long time today. Uh, hit the like button if you appreciate that I spent a whole day doing this for you guys. <laughs> all right, let's just set them up and let them ride. I guess I'll just uh, respond to your comments on previous videos while I wait for one of these cameras to overheat. Yeah. All right, both cameras have been filming at 24 frames a second without stabilization right now for one hour. I've, I've kind of gotten bored of this test because I don't think they're gonna overheat at 24 frames a second. Neither of them even feels warm right now. So uh, let's go back to the van. I'm gonna charge them back up and we'll go out and we'll do 60 frames a second. And I'm gonna turn stabilization on this time. So 60 frames a second with stabilization. That's next. said that this was gonna be like a really simple, quick and easy video to make, well, it is now five days later and I have still been testing these cameras. Let me explain why. First though, the results from the skateboarding clips downtown. I was recording at 4K, 60 frames a second on both cameras. The GoPro first made it to 23 minutes and two seconds and the DJI Action 2 went to 49 minutes and 14 seconds. Data. I then cooled them down, charged them back up, cooled them down again because even charging them kind of heats them up a little bit. And then the GoPro did 25 minutes and 51 seconds, a little better. And the DJI Action 2 went to 56 minutes and one second before overheating a significant advantage over the GoPro, right? Well, there's, there's something else to consider here. First though, let's look at the results from the 4K testing. So I jumped them up to 4K, 120 frames a second, really stressing these cameras. Again, the thing that really overheats these cameras is those higher frame rates. So 4K, 120, that's, that's gonna be the worst results we're gonna see. And it was. The GoPro made it to 15 minutes and four seconds. Did the same thing, charged it back up, cooled it back down, got to 11 minutes and two seconds at 4K, 120 frames a second. The DJI Action 2 did 31 minutes and 26 seconds and then 33 minutes and 47 seconds. So again, way better than the GoPro. Uh, in that result there, twice as good, twice as long as the GoPro, but, and let me say, this is a, a massive but, 
you might not get the same results that I did. And the reason for that is that the action two is actually geofenced to allow me to go into a mode called high temp recording. See here in the US under the settings mode, I can go to auto stop record temp, check that out. See, I have standard and I have high. But again, that's geofenced for the US. If you live in Europe, the UK, or I believe Canada, in those three places, you don't have that high temperature mode. You can't even go into that high temperature mode. That's because of consumer protection regulations. And I believe that those are regulations are addressing two things. One, this camera gets super hot and that is not good for the camera components. You really don't want your camera components getting that hot all the time because you'll break your camera. But the second reason I believe that they don't have a high temp mode over there is because after each of the tests, I was I was heat checking the outside. How hot does the case of the camera get? The GoPro, I think I saw it at like 115 at the very, very most. But this camera in high temperature mode, when it overheated, the outside body right here registered in at 139 degrees Fahrenheit or 59.4 degrees Celsius. That is hot. I looked it up and saw that at 118 degrees Fahrenheit, you can get first degree burns on your skin. And at 131 degrees Fahrenheit, you can get second degree burns on your skin. So if this thing were to overheat and you were to be holding this in your hand, you could actually get second degree burns on your skin. Kind of crazy that we are allowed to have a high heat mode in the US. So then I ran the same tests on the Action 2, but in standard heat mode. And what I got was interesting. In standard heat, 4K, 60 frames a second. On the Action 2, I got 26 minutes and 31 seconds. Then on the second test, I got 23 minutes and 55 seconds, which is really similar to what the GoPro was able to do at 4K 60 but where it gets really interesting is at 4K 120. Standard heat mode on the Action 2, 4K 120, I got four minutes and 50 seconds, and then four minutes and 42 seconds. That is not good. So with that, I thought that the test was done. I thought the results were in, but then I mentioned to a friend that I was doing this test in the first place, and he said, hey man, are you using that new DJI case that they came out with that addresses the heat issue to which I said, what? Ah, DJI back in April, unbeknownst to me, came out with this plastic case. This piece right here is for the top bit of the action. This piece is for the bottom bit. They, they click together when the action is in there. And this apparently was to address the overheating issue with the camera. Now this case is $20, but there is a website. I'll put it, I'll put it right here. You can go there. If you already bought the action too, like a while back, you can go there and see if you're eligible for them to send you one of these bad boys for free. But again, it's like 20 bucks if you just wanna buy one on Amazon and get it sent to you the next day like I did. But how much does it actually help? And the truth is it helps a lot, but not for the reason that I think, I think that DJI is saying that it helps. Because supposedly it's, it's just a case that helps disperse heat, but when you put the case on there, you put it together, you get a little pop-up message on the screen that says you're using the magnetic case. So the Action 2 knows that it is now in a plastic protective case. And I believe that because of that, there's a, a middle threshold that the camera now lets itself heat up to. So there's standard, there's high, and then there's like magnetic case built into the software. You can't do it in the settings, but it's in the software because when it is in this case, it does get significantly better results and I, I don't believe that this case magically disperses heat much better than when it's not in the case. What I think is that DJI is letting the camera get hotter inside the case because for those pesky consumer regulations, it now knows that you can touch the outside when it overheats. And while it's still quite warm out here, you're not touching the actual camera, so you probably can't burn yourself. Um. Yeah, but how much better does it do while it is in the magnetic case? At 4K 60 from the Action 2, I'm now seeing 42 minutes and 46 seconds. Again, this is in the standard mode. Before we were seeing like 24 and 25 minutes, now it jumps to 42 minutes, and then I got 39 minutes and 55 seconds, so same thing, around that 40 minute mark, while in the case at standard mode. Again, I think that there's like a little trick in there where they're letting the camera get a little hotter, but not all the way to the high heat. 
I think there's a middle ground because it knows that it's in the case. Because then at 4K 120, I saw 16 minutes and four seconds and then 15 minutes and 43 seconds. Are you as confused with all of this as I am. Let's try to break it down real quick. So if you are somewhere like Europe, the UK or Canada, where you cannot go into that high heat mode, um, it is a tough sell to say that, hey, yes, you should for sure buy this, but uh, you gotta always keep it in the plastic case. You can't take it out of the plastic case, otherwise you're gonna get really terrible numbers. Like 4K 125 minutes? That is not good. Now if you're in those countries and you've already bought the action too, I would say 100%, Go get this case, whether it's through that, that coupon website or just picking it up for 20 bucks on Amazon, you should for sure get this case. It's gonna significantly improve your run times. But for most people in those countries, I, I kinda think you should just buy a GoPro Hero 10. I think that makes the most sense. You don't have to deal with the plastic case. You don't have to deal with that whole just worrying about that or being geofenced, like feeling like you're left out of something that people in the US are getting and you're, you're not getting, that's frustrating. Okay, then what about those of us that are in the US? Should you get the Action 2 or should you get the GoPro? Now, while it is nice, the Action 2 can do that high heat mode, I really don't think you should ever use it. Maybe sometimes, maybe like in a pinch, you have to do it, throw it to that high heat mode, get the shot, potentially risk damaging your camera by doing so, but you did get the shot and, and ultimately that's what's most important. For that, I would say, Yes, it is nice knowing that you do have that on the Action 2. And then same thing in the US, if you are just buying this camera, it's gonna come with this case. If you've already bought this camera, for sure go get the magnetic case. It it does, I believe, add a third mode that's in there that's, that's somewhere between high and standard. It, it kind of gives you that, that middle mode that maybe won't damage your camera so much and doesn't get so hot. Doesn't give you as crazy results as in high heat, but it's better than standard. The other question you have to ask yourself in the US though, this magnetic case, I I don't like it. So the case itself, it clips on. So the, the mount here, it's not grabbing the camera, it's grabbing the case, right? So the, the mount is now on the case and the case is holding the camera. The problem is though, the camera bottom bit, it's barely in there. Like do this, right? It comes right out. So if you are using your camera for action, the case when mounted, like if you had this on a chin mount and it hit something, boom, your camera's gone. Like this is a, it's a garbage mount to be, to be used in like an action scenario. The top piece is good because the top piece, like see how this fully wraps the, the camera bit? Like to get it out, you've gotta, you gotta like push your thumb in and like push it out. So I don't think you'd have an issue much with like this piece falling off if this was on a mount. But if you do have it set up like that with the battery bit on the bottom or the screen bit, um, it does just come right out. Okay, I wanna know from you guys, with all that said, with everything we've gone over, with, with the plastic case that, that this one kind of needs, which of these two cameras would you go with? Would you go with the DJI Action 2 or the GoPro Hero 10? I wanna know from you guys, what do you think? Cause I'm, I'm as confused as you are. I will tell you guys my answer down in the comments, but I wanna hear yours. Also though, while you comment, tell me where you live. Are you, are you in that geofence zone where you don't have that high heat option available? Maybe you're in the US and you just realize, I don't wanna overheat my camera to 139 degrees and potentially cook the insides of my device. Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you guys soon. Put your hand, just try to touch that top part, didn't I? Holy sh This just seems like the silliest design for an action camera. That does not take much to get that right out of there. So dumb. Those of you wondering about this sweet mustache I got going, um, follow me on Instagram and you'll see why I got this sweet mustache. <laughs> It's worth the follow, I promise. Just for the mustache, worth worth the follow on Instagram. <laughs>